oil and gas are regarded as high value resources. However, much more than the discovery and production is needed to realize the paybacks that will accrue to Uganda. When well managed, the resources could spur the development of the country and the region, and thus they hold a renewed commitment to poverty eradication and transforming lives in Uganda more than ever before. And you thinking that speaks of value addition, transparency and accountability management of expectations and national participation is emerging. And with it comes many prospects as opportunities open in a new sector. Innovative policies taking on the best practices for resource revenue and management processes are being highlighted to ensure value for the oil resources. What Uganda is doing is, uh, is going the right direction because I, I hear the Ugandans saying that this is going to be beneficial to the country. I hear the Ugandans saying that it needs to be carefully invested. I hear the Ugandans saying that they need to be, uh, build up local competence in order to deal with these things. I hear Ugandans saying that there is a need for a broad pu public debate on these things. But I also, uh, I, I also do see that um, there needs to be a better understanding of the importance of a public debate. The National Oil and Gas Policy lays down efficiency in licensing areas with hydrocarbon potential and Uganda has prepared to embark on geophysical surveys in other areas with limited data but with potential for petroleum production. An area spanning 14,000 square kilometers of acreage with high potential for petroleum production exists in the Albertine Graben. This includes over 10,000 square kilometers available after the departure of companies' relinquishment and expiry of exploration licenses. Government has restated its goal in the national oil and gas policy as that of using the oil and gas resources to contribute to early achievement of poverty eradication and creating lasting value to society. As laid in the policy and strategies, developing and utilizing the resources is aimed at maximizing opportunities and addressing emerging challenges. We have managed expectations of people by explaining to them what is going to happen. Uh, we have put laws so that the, guided, the sector is guided by clear, a clear policy framework, clear legislation. So there is that challenge. Uh, there is the challenge of generally people thinking that uh, all of the sudden life is going to change because of oil again, management of expectations. So I've got to continuously communicate with the public that when you discover oil, uh, a lot of more efforts have got to be put in. You have got to develop other sectors of the economy. Oil alone is not the economy. It, it is an input into the economy. A new institutional framework for the sector which separates policy setting, regulation of the industry, and execution of commercial aspects has been put in place and the Petroleum Authority, a national oil company, were created to regulate the sector and manage government's commercial interests, including handling of state participation, respectively. We needed our own company that would be able to take care of our interests and enable us also uh, uh, take part in the uh, business process. Parliament approved the Board of Directors for the National Oil Company and once the incorporation has been done, then the board members will be appointed and we shall be ready to take off. The companies can opt to give government its share in kind. And once this is given in kind, or government itself can opt to have its share in kind. Once this is given in kind, then it's a national oil company to market or commercialize this share that has been given uh, in kind. The company may also opt to go into the licensing itself to go into joint venture with other companies, even opt to go outside the country and acquire licensing and participate in petroleum operations outside the country. The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development uses the petroleum resources management systems to classify and report the petroleum resources. Despite all appraisals, surveys and well testing done, Commercial production of petroleum in the country has not yet started. However, the appraisal has provided understanding of the volumes of oil and gas and most efficient methods of producing these volumes. 
acquired data is used to prepare field development plans and petroleum reservoir reports submitted to government as part of the application for production licenses. When uh, we have oil and gas ongoing activities in the upstream sector, we always have a monitor on behalf of the government to come and see how operations are going. We regulate the, the operations, we make sure that everything is going to as planned. The costs are within the limits, the operations are going as planned. Among others, we monitor the health, safety and environment, make sure everything is, is, is okay. Then um, the operations have to be exactly on dot. Three oil companies are currently licensed to undertake petroleum exploration activities in the country. These are Talo Uganda Operations Limited, Toto E&P Uganda, and China National Offshore Oil Corporation Uganda Limited, which was also granted a production license. In February 2015, RIT Global Resources was announced by government as a selected lead investor in the development of the refinery and in March 2015, government announced the first round of licensing of six blocks in the Albertine Grebel. Building an oil refinery is among the infrastructural programs that have been initiated, including plans for pipelines and the airport at Kabale. This is a result of a feasibility study that recommended that building it in Uganda is feasible and a viable option. The recommendation is to develop a 60,000 barrels per day refinery in a modular manner, starting with 30,000 barrels per day to be delivered in three years and later expand to 60,000 barrels per day with a possibility of further expansion depending on availability of crude resources. We've been trying to attract a lead investor who will bring in 60% of this cost. We are now reaching the end of that selection of a lead investor who will not only bring in capital but also will uh, bring expertise to develop this refinery. Uh, the government will soon uh, be announcing who that lead investor is, following which we will embark on engineering studies that include front-end engineering and design that include uh, environmental impact assessment. Um, when that is done, we will go into the phase of concluding financing, what we call financial close, and therefore embark on engineering procurement and construction, also known as EPC. Government has agreed to export crude oil alongside the development of the refinery. A memorandum of understanding between government and the licensed oil companies provides for a revised commercialization plan for the development of the resources. It also provides for the use of petroleum for power generation, supply of crude oil to the refinery and export of the extra crude oil through an export pipeline or any other viable option. You can't have a refinery in isolation, especially a refinery that is developed in a remote area like ours. So therefore we have been putting in place uh, modalities for us to develop infrastructure like pipelines, starting with pipelines that will bring the crude oil from the oil fields to the refinery area. And then we will need to develop a, refine, a pipeline that will bring products from the refinery in Hoima to the main market in Kampala. Uh, that pipeline will terminate at Voloba, and there, there also we will develop uh, a storage facility. We are also working with the regional governments to develop some uh, regional pipelines that will take this product to, say for instance, Chigali. A comprehensive resettlement action plan was developed to guide the land acquisition process and ensure it conforms the international standards and best practices. With over 90% of property owners already compensated, land acquisition is nearing completion. Construction of resettlement houses for those who opted for relocation is also about to commence. Putting in place infrastructure for oil and gas in one way or another disrupts the livelihoods of people who are staying in those areas, uh, for example, through acquired acquisition of land. It is also important that mechanisms are put in place to ensure that livelihoods are restored. And this is exactly uh, what we have done through training, and for those ones who will be resettled or physically relocated, of course there is a whole package of interventions that are being put in place to cater for aspects of livelihood restoration. 
As part of infrastructural development, the Hoima Kaisotonya Road was completed and commissioned by the president during 2015. We have seen the more people are coming, more people coming meaning that there, is, there are more activities already also taking place. We see some uh, hotels are coming up, uh, schools have come up, like the, we see now the other primary school up there, we were using the, the somewhere where the children were standing down, but now we have a very good primary school. And uh, like the health centre has already been put up in another the area landing site there. These vehicles are now what? Loading straight from here, taking direct up Kampala. So there is that cut of the cost. Wana fundisa sisi namu na yakutumia pesa. Wana sema sisi kiti kinyo kutukama tunayenda fuanya. To pange program pamoja na familia. Tusefuanya kiti ya pembeni na family. Tusitupe watoto na wamama. Tusendele kwa kiti ya kuwa wabibi wa ingini. Tusende kwa kwa ushareti. Kwa hiyo milioni miyamoja sisi natani. Faida yako kinyo mimi konai. Nimejenga nyumbani hii. Na boys quarter yote hiko rumu ishirini. Nikajenga vile nyumbani ngini ya watoto yangu, murangu ini. Nikatoka hapo, nikalongeza, nanuwa chuma ya kusaga, nanuwa gari, natia watoto yangu sasa kwa kwa sule, mikuna dukani, mikuna biyasara, mingi. As government develops the sector, legislation to guide both upstream, midstream activities and revenue management has become pertinent to support activities. The petroleum exploration, Development and Production Act 2013 and the Petroleum Refining, Conversion, Transmission and Midstream Storage Act 2013 are giving legal backing and these are applied alongside other relevant laws and statutes like the Revenue Management Act 2014, those on environment, wildlife, water, land and income tax and ensuring regulations. As a way of ensuring collection of the right revenues and creating value for the nation, the oil and gas revenue management policy was developed. We want to see progress in other areas. We are waiting to hear the day for the production licenses to be given. Because without this, the others coming will really drag their feet. Deal with tax issues of exploration on VAT and withholding tax. These have been a very big thorn in the, in the neck of our industry address these issues in the coming budget as soon as possible. Do not be shy. There is no way we can develop this resource God given without us being practical and appreciating business issues. Revenue management, production and sharing laid out in different contracts stipulate a share of 80% of the proceeds accruing to Uganda while companies receive 20% of the produced crude. However, allegations have remained abound regarding transparent management of these benefits as many raise issues regarding sharing of revenues. It's been noted that transparency should be in respect of contracts, including confidentiality and honoring the expectations of all stakeholders. We want to maximize the benefit from it. We understand and appreciate the pain that the investors may have because of the investment they put in. They would want to start recouping that investment. But also at the same time remember that we are stakeholders. We have signed production sharing agreement. We are going to share what we have produced. So it's not only one way, it's both ways. The more we produce, the more we both benefit. Oil and gas are high technology, capital intensive, and require constant training. These take time before the industry can yield returns. Commencing production is expected in 2018 and by 2014. Government had received $1.9 trillion from non-tax revenues, capital gains tax, and other tax obligations from operations in the sector. One transaction fetched over 400 million United States dollars, one transaction. So you can imagine our treasury receiving that amount of money in one transaction. So that's a benefit, uh, a contribution of the sector to the country. Then of course there is investment. I think the amount of money that has been invested in the sector now 
to date is above 3 billion United States dollars. If you looked at the other sectors, you'll find that there's not many other sectors that have attracted that amount of money of investment. We are hopeful that as we go forward and the fields are developed and the refineries developed, then we can have more security of supply, we can save the foreign exchange the country is saving, uh, is spending on importing petroleum products. A national content study to establish the opportunities and challenges for the participation of Ugandans in the oil and gas sector was completed in 2010. The recommendations of this study are now being implemented, including establishing a content policy and a national content office in the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. Efforts continue to ensure that Ugandans participate actively through direct employment and provision of goods and services to the sector. This includes formation of an association of oil and gas service providers and a requirement for licensed oil companies to have nationalization plans which are approved and monitored. Very often you will see in the newspapers adverts by oil companies, adverts by service companies and adverts for services that the companies require. And so once these are advertised, a lot of Ugandans are applying and they are taking this forward. Uh, we have also ensured that the foreign workers who come into the country, uh, the companies first establish whether there is a Ugandan who has the qualifications and experience to do that work. And so when they advertise, all jobs are required to be advertised. When they advertise and don't get an appropriate person, then they apply for a work permit for a foreign person to come in. The three licensed companies, Talo, Total and Chinu, together with the international service companies Baker Hills, Schumberger, Exalo and Halliburton, have offered up to 1,000 jobs to Ugandans with each company employing more than 50% locals as staff. With commitment to supporting the development and maintenance of national skills and expertise, the Uganda Petroleum Institute, Chigumba, which offers a diploma and certificate courses in petroleum-related studies, was established under the Ministry of Education and Sports. The institute has to date produced 88 technicians who undertook two years of formal training at the institute and six months of industrial training in Trinidad and Tobago. These are new structures which government deliberately decided to put in place to kickstart the teaching and learning process of petroleum and gas studies, which we have already done by establishing the legal framework. And now we are looking forward to establishing the institutional framework. This institute is very unique. It is the first of its kind in the region. We are also looking forward to attracting other students from the East African region or in the African continent to come and study here so that they can be able to go and manage the oil and gas industries in their respective countries or even find jobs within Uganda as per the law. In 2010, a bachelor's degree in petroleum geosciences was introduced at Makerere University and a Master of Science in Petroleum Geoscience program started in 2012 in collaboration with the University of Bergen, Norway. The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development supports this training through facilitating fieldwork, supervising and internship programs in the Albertin Graben and elsewhere. We have been in so many countries uh, where we have gone to see what they are doing and we have also uh, learned good lessons. We have also learned bad lessons which we should avoid for the benefit of the citizens. Uh, the countries which we have visited or which have benchmarked are India, because uh, India we have been with them, we have been to their field, we have seen what they do. We have been to Norway, we have been to Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we have been to Nigeria. Those people ask us, why do you go to Nigeria? We have been there. We have been to Ghana to see how best they are doing it. As much as Ghana has more of offshore activities, but at least we have shared. Uh, we have also gone to Algeria to see how they are doing, uh, uh, how they are handling the sector. Uh, we have been to Mozambique, among other countries. To ensure that environmental concerns are captured in government's plans, programs and policies, 
A strategic environment assessment for oil and gas activities has been prepared and includes a contingency plan for use in the unlikely outcome of an oil spill. Government has put in place a multi-institutional environment monitoring team to monitor the interface between the environment and petroleum activities. The team is led by the National Environment Management Authority and composed of the Uganda Wildlife Authority, the Directorate of Water Resources Management, Fisheries Resources Department, National Forestry Authority, Directorate of Environmental Affairs in the Ministry of Water and Environment, District Local Governments, and the Directorate of Petroleum. There's been uh, a, a good level of compliance, relatively good level of compliance to the required uh, environmental requirements. And this has been mainly through our uh, regular compliance op uh, inspections. So generally, we believe the actors are taking measures to minimize impacts on the environment. When there was drilling, all precaution was taken to ensure that our environment re remained undisturbed. I've seen oil companies, I've seen the ministry taking keen interest to ensure that the uh, environment is preserved and where some activity has occurred. I have also even seen activities of restoring uh, uh, environment where it has been disturbed by said drilling operations. And to me, that's healthy, that's a good start. And when they're laying these cables, uh, different types like 2D, 3D, you find a place like this bush, open wide. And then uh, they're moving, this one open, this one open at certain regular intervals, you find a lot of destruction to vegetation, like done in other places. But I think over time, when our team probably went outside, saw from somewhere, they came back saying, no, we need to change. That is uh, what they did now. They came to this cableless system. Sometimes people don't clear all these cables from the, from the field. And then when these people, they come across these cables, like uh, these are very good for like traps for wildlife. They would use it for trapping wildlife. Planning for land use in specific towns and growth centers around the refinery area has been undertaken. The Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development is developing a regional physical development plan together with the Canadian Pacific Transcom International Limited as consultants. Uh, the Albert and Regional Sustainable Development Project focuses uh, mainly on infrastructure development, education and uh, urban development. And the key implementing agencies there are our services. Uh, Minister of Works and Transport, UNLA, uh, Minister of Education. Uh, and our, uh, you may be aware that uh, some major roads, uh, for example, from uh, Chenjojo through Hoima to uh, are going to be developed under, under, that, under that project. That's the infrastructure component. Under the the urban development stroke physical planning component, the number of now uh, smaller towns to be, uh, to be planned and these have been identified. What the regional plan does uh, basically is provide a general direction on the things that we need to do. And these districts, those lower level plans have been identified as the critical areas for intervention in order to translate the broader principles of the regional physical development plan into the lower level uh, planning interventions. Agreements with neighboring Congo have allowed oil companies licensed by the government of the DRC to undertake oil exploration and development in DRC using Uganda as a base or as a transit route for movement of the equipment and personnel. The East African Community Partner States of Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda are working together to realize development of key infrastructure such as pipelines, the refinery project and the railway network in order to support the developments and promote investment in the region's emerging oil and gas sector. As an experience of international art experience, 
we've had good working relationship with the Ministry of Energy. I remember when we were organizing for uh, a dialogue uh, because we had a component, a cross-border component in our first phase where we were working uh, together with the DRC uh, stakeholders. Um, Ministry of Energy was very uh, participatory and also they allowed the Congolese to visit some of these oil wells. As you know, some of them have always had this perception that Uganda could be siphoning oil on the other side. But some of these issues, I hope that uh, through our engagements, the few Congolese that we met have been ambassadors on the other side. Over 30 seismic surveys have been conducted, leading to the acquisition of 7,254 line kilometers of two-dimensional seismic data and 1,948 square kilometers of three-dimensional seismic data. 116 exploration and appraisal wells have been drilled, with 102 encountering oil and gas, an exceptional drilling success rate. The best uh, operators will be able to recover between 30 and 50 percent of the oil in place. Here we are talking about, you know, 25 to 30 percent today, and this is because of the properties of the oil that we have. When you have oil that is waxy, it means it will remain more on the grain. But there are methods of enhancing recovery, so we can use hot water, we can use polymers, and these will be able to add maybe between 3 to 8 percent of the total recovery. So this is something that is known and in Uganda. We are doing everything we can in order to let the oil companies do a lot of research on our new oil such that we are able to recover much more than what has been uh, anticipated. Planning for the development, production and refining of petroleum in the country is beginning to provide opportunities and benefits to the people of Uganda, its economy and the region at large. These opportunities include new investments, development of infrastructure, demand for services in the country, employment opportunities, establishment of multinational companies in the country, technology transfer and industrial development. We're talking about 6.5 billion barrels of oil in place. Out of that, 1.5 billion barrels is recoverable. That's a wonderful asset. That's one. Number two, there has been a steady flow. Actually, not only steady, but accelerated uh, flow of foreign direct investments in the country. As we speak now, uh, we are talking about a cumulative direct, uh, direct foreign investment of the order of 3.1 billion uh, dollars. That is a remarkable achievement. And by the way, that has created, uh, that has uh, uh, made the environment for the country more stable. Uh, number three, we are seeing a lot of uh, business we are being stimulated by the oil and gas industry coming into the country, uh, infrastructure, uh, development, service provision which was not there, uh, clearing, forwarding, high tech companies are coming in here. Uh, that is no mean achievement. Technology transfer, that is another important element. Number four, of course, we have built capacity, that is quite uh, uh, significant. Uh, we have uh, a critical mass of technical and the business people who are able to move the sector forward. As the country prepares to enter development and production phases of the petroleum value chain, a concerted effort on the part of the stakeholders to maximize the opportunities and lessen any challenges is considered critical. With Ugandans reaping the benefits of oil, thanks to the enabling legal, regulatory and policy frameworks and a conducive social, economic and political environment. Uganda's oil will surely be a blessing to the country. <laughs>